Hey guys, this is Pharaoh 2091 and welcome back to Let's Play 999. Last time left off, we were searching around for those components, but when we came back, it seems like all the reds by the doors were working again. But as soon as we uh, figured that out, we were like, where the hell is Snake? Clover got upset and tried to look for him, and now we're looking for both Clover and Snake. We already checked the casino uh, area, so now we're just gonna we're gonna go ahead and go to the first class cabin. Let's go take a look at the first class cabin. It's really close. It turned around and took off down the hallway to their left. Now, I would assume that he could be also be in a cabin because the casino or a cabin because that's where Snake was previously. I would think that he would be a little bit more familiar with the area, but who knows? Outside of the first class cabin, they found Clover. She was standing in front of the wall. She was staring at a meaningless point on the wall. Her eyes blink. What should Junpei do? Uh, I guess talk to her. Why the hell not? Are you alright? He did his best to sound friendly, but Clover didn't respond. Look, I know you're really worried, but, um... He could think of no words to say that didn't sound hollow or fake. Junpei hesitated. Clover was so consumed by worry and fear that Junpei feared it would crush her. Her actions didn't surprise him. She, she had suddenly lost her brother, who seemed to, to be very close to her. Lone. Her voice was thin and barely audible. Lone. Lone. Huh? I said leave me alone! Oh, okay. I didn't hear the, those words. Suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying! Just go away, leave me alone! Just looking at you guys is pissing me off. Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else. Stop bothering me. Junbei was taken aback. Such anger and hate. Jun's eyes had gone wide with surprise as well. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? Uh, fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just. All right, all right. Let's go, Jun. Yeah. They turned and left Clover. As they did, Junpei glanced back over her shoulder to see Clover wiping tears from her face. Clover had driven home the misery of their situation, but Junpei told himself that getting de getting depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. For Clover's sake, they had to fight the snake, and fast. He did his best to push away the misery and depression, and force a smile. So, where do you think we should go next? Um... I guess we already checked the casino, so let's uh, go back to the hallway. Hey, why don't we go back to the sea deck? We can take a look at the hallway with all the rooms. Okay, let's get going then. Together they ran down the stairs. Ahead of them farther down the hallway, they spotted Ace. Hey! Snake! Where are you? Answer me if you're there! Jupe paused. What do you want to do? Why don't we run? I don't know. I mean, am I not picking the right ass things here? I mean, because leaving alone doesn't seem to help, but, you know, hey, whatever. With Jude in tow, Junpei jogged up the ace. Hearing their footsteps, he turned to greet them. Oh, hello there. Snake is, a. Uh, well, that's obvious, isn't it? I assume you haven't found him yet, either. And Junpei nodded. I really wonder why, uh, where he could have gone. Well, whatever he's disappeared to, we must find him as quickly as we can, as we can for Clover's sake. Right. Jude's face looked kind of um, enraptured. And by the way, do you think Clover and Snake are really siblings? Uh, why would you say that? Why would you say that? The question seems somehow odd, Junpei. Why? why? No, it's obvious, isn't it? They don't look alike at all. Ace looked for look at him for looked at him for a moment and then spoke. Yes, you know, now that you mention it, they don't. Now that you mention it. Still, there are a great many siblings who do not look like one another. It certainly isn't rare. Junpei wasn't sure why, but even if he was seeing what he thought he was, but he could have sworn that Ace's face tightened as he spoke. At any rate, we must find we really must find a snake as soon as possible. The clock is ticking. We really can't afford uh, to waste any time here. Very well. Let's get back to the search, shall we? You can leave this area to me. Alright. Let's go, Jumpy. At June's urging, they left. 
They found themselves back in the stairs, but Junpei's mind was in turmoil. There was so much to think about, but... No, it, it would have to be put aside for now. As Ace had said, finding Snake was their top priority at the moment. Junpei did his best to clear his mind. Alright, where should we go next? I, I don't know, I guess we go back to the large hospital room, unless we were meant to go back somewhere else, I don't know. Why don't we go back to the big hospital room? Okay, let's go then. They turned and headed back toward the large hospital room. On their way to the large hospital room, Junpei and Jun noticed Santa standing next to the number three door. Junpei paused. What should Junpei do? Why not talk to him? Junpei and Jun walked up to Santa. What are you doing? What, you can't tell? I'm checking out the red. Why, is there something bothering you? What, it's not bothering you? Huh? This, uh, the guts of the red. Why wouldn't you wonder who the hell put it back in here? Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm curious too. Who do you think did it? Santa's eyes narrowed as he looked at June. She shook her head. I don't know. Well, what about you, Junpei? Who do you think fixed this thing for us? Oof. I don't know, I doubt it'll be Snake. Why would it be low? I don't know! Zero? Maybe? Maybe? Then why the hell they're taking out in the first place? I may, I'll do that. I don't know, because I don't know. Maybe there's someone else on the ship with us. You mean someone hiding here? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just an idea. And you're saying this mystery person fixed the reds? Yeah. Why? That's, um... I don't know. Santa shoved his hands in his pockets and cracked his knuckles. Seems unlikely. Why? I don't know, just a feeling. Hard to believe Zero bring in a secret 10th player. I mean, the name of this game is the Notary, Notary Game, for Christ's sake. You know what Notary means, right? It means 9. No, am I even saying that right now, Notary? Oh, whatever. No, it's not what I meant. I, I meant more like someone who's been living here for a long time. Or someone who, like stayed here. Seriously? That's even more ridiculous. Why do you think Zero would leave them alone? Junpei furled his brow. So in other words, one of us is the person who fixed her red. They sent a grin. Bingo! We have a winner! But if that's true, then the person who did it, uh, who did it doesn't want the rest of us to know they fixed her red. Yeah. But why? No idea. Maybe if they come clean at that, it means we find out something else. Something bad. Something bad? Don't know. But whatever it is, it's gonna be worth hiding. Hmm. Of course, it could have been something to do with Snake's disappearance. Do you think maybe they did something to Snake? It's not out of the question. Junpei stared at Santa. There was something about him that made Junpei wary. At first, he assumed the other man wasn't terribly clever, but Junpei was beginning to think he would need to re-evaluate re the uh, bad assessment. When Santa spoke again, his voice was quiet. Look, if you trust anybody in this game, you're gonna lose. You've gotta be careful. The person you trust the most could turn out to be the one who stabs you in the back. Was that a depressing suggestion? He turned and quickly walked away. Junpei and Jun looked at one another and smiled awkwardly. Where w uh, Well, what happens- okay, well, let's just go back to some to little areas here. Maybe- maybe it'll, uh, um, maybe something new will happen here. There was no one there. They had no choice. You can Jun turn around and head into a different location. And then we'll go back to the hallway. Um, let's just see, maybe Clover's there or not. Wait, is this is where Clover was? No, she was by the first class cabin, I believe. Nope. Okay. Uh. Yeah, she was by first class cabin, so. Let's. Of course, you're coming with me. I and mean, what are you gonna do? Just stay here? No one was there again. Crap. Uh. Let's just go back to the. Oop, nope, don't want to do that. Uh, let's go back to the hospital room then. 
And I guess we can finish searching then. Because I don't think we can figure out anything else. Oh, where the hell does Santa go now? I'm just finishing this up. I don't know what else to do. They looked everywhere they could think of, but Snake was nowhere to be found. This is kind of sad now. Lotus looked around at six frustrated faces and spoke. We can't keep looking for Snake. Wherever he is, he's not here. We need to get moving. Junpei could have disagreed with what she was saying. Snake seemed to have completely disappeared. There was no point in wasting any more time. The others seemed to be having similar thoughts, but they stayed silent. Finally, Seven spoke. We don't got a choice. Lotus is right. We're not going to find Snake. There's a problem, though. We gotta figure out who's gonna go through which door. Yes, I have a proposal. She walked back and forth across the floor, her heels clacking, clicking against the wood. Finally, she stopped. Why don't we decide on one person to sacrifice? Sacrifice? Well, perhaps that's a bit of a harsh word, but yes. We've all figured out by now, haven't, haven't you? We can't all make it through those doors. If we split into two teams of four and three people respectively, then three people will be left behind. If we split into two teams of five and two respectively, then two people will be left behind. But if we split into two groups of three and leave one person out, then, on then only one person will be left behind. Leaving behind three people of two teams of four and three. Wait. Leaving behind three people with two teams of four and three. Wait, am I not thinking about this correctly? Leaving behind three people with two teams of four and three. Why leave, why leave behind three of them? If there's two teams of four. Oh, oh. I'm trying to think of crap in the top of my head here regarding the numbers and everything. I'm just going to say not sure. Just get this going on here. Jumbi wasn't quite sure that was true. Wait a minute. Two people get left behind if we split into five and two. And one person left, is left behind if we split into three, three, and one. If that, I got that part. You can't go through the number of doors to any less than three people. But if we slip into four and three, then why do three people get left behind? See, that's what I was kind of thinking. Unless the digital route has something to do with it. Just run the numbers. Let's say we go through door seven with one, four, five, and six. Who's left over? Now we'll be three, seven, eight. And what's the digital route for that? Uh, nine? Yeah, that ain't right. Exactly. But door 9 is in here, right? That means 378 won't be going anywhere. That was just an example, of course. There's a lot of different combinations, but the result will always be the same. It doesn't matter which 4 it is, the 3 that are left over can't go through any of the doors. Go ahead and calculate it if you have the time. You'll see. Anyway, that's how it is. Now, if we can get back to my proposal, we only we ha only have to sacrifice one person if we split into three, three, and one. The seven spoke, his voice was strained. Then, you, you're saying we gotta decide who's gonna stay behind. Yes, we do. Given our circumstances, it's logically and mor morally the best solution. If the other six are to survive, then one person has to sacrifice themselves. No, that's too cruel! What's so cruel about it? To just... To, to sacrifice someone like that? Then what's your plan? Maybe we should sacrifice two people instead of just one. That's not what I meant. We shouldn't go sacrifice anyone. I told you that's impossible. Wake up! Whoa, calm down, you two. Santa stepped between Lois and June. Look, what Lois is trying to say is that we should aim to bring the greatest uh, amount of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Exactly. That's how democracy works. And for that reason, I think the only fair way to decide who will be sacrificed is to through a vote. What do you think? No, that's terrible! I'm not asking you! Shut up! What about you, Santa? Me? Well, I agree, I guess. Alright then, that's one, one vote four. Kind of mine, that's two. Seven? I can't say I agree with you, but... We don't exactly have a choice. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die. Glad to see you get it. If I can get one more vote in this society. What about you, Clover? Oh, she was here, I forgot. 
She moved away from the group and was sitting on one of the beds. Her whole body dropped. Jupe didn't know she even heard of Lotus's proposal. Lotus walked over to Clover and gently laid a hand on her shoulder. Your brother has to be behind one of the numbered doors. We searched everywhere, but we don't didn't find him. Doesn't that mean he has to? Doesn't that mean he has to have gone through one of them somehow? Clover slowly lifted her face. Let's go look for him together, okay? If we sacrifice one person, then we can go look for him. You agree with me, right? Clover nodded once. Giggle. The motion carries. Uh, I'm not really sure I like Lotus now. She spun around and walked towards Junpei. Now let's start a vote to... That won't be necessary. Ace had barely spoken for Lotus' entire speech and everyone just jumped a little. Sixper's eyes turned to, look, turned to look at him. He didn't seem to notice or even care. I will stay. That should solve our problem, yes? Oh, why? No, don't do that. He just sacrificed himself. Explanation mark. Ace, what were you saying? No, you <coughs> can't do that. You won't. That won't solve anything. June's voice shook, and she looked around desperately for someone to agree with her. Ace simply looked at her. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. Huh? I trust. I trust you, each and every one of you. I believe you'll come back for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's optimistic. And then there's that's just there's op there's optimist no. there's optimistic, and then there's just nuts. Those doors only go one way. You go in, you don't come out. If we go through them, you won't be able to return. Correct? Well, yeah. True, but that will not be the case once we you escaped the ship. What? Please, I beg you, once you've escaped, come back and rescue me. Ideally, with the time limit Zero has given us. No, that's ridiculous! There's no way we could get back in time! Finally, Junpei could hold his tongue no longer. We've only got five hours left. We don't even know where the, where the hell we are. How on earth are we going to find someone to come and rescue you? Then perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me. Or perhaps you would be willing to leave Jun behind. His voice was dignified and without a hint of cruelty or malice. Junpei had no rebuttal. You see? There's no other choice. Then I see we'll come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry yourselves over about me. Go! Quickly! Junpei stood frozen by, ind by indecision, unable to move. Jun bit her lip so hard that Junpei feared she would break the skin. Santa stood against the wall, calm and aloof. Seven tore his beanie from his head and turned it over anxiously in his hands. Only Clover stared at Ace and with an expression Junpei was unable to decipher. Lois's attitude, however, was different from the others. Good! Let's, let's accept his kind offer then. She smiled, her eyes bright. Ace answered with a smile of his own. Good. I think this is the best for me. Perhaps I'll be able to take a nap. Perhaps it's my age, but I'm get, I get tired so easily these days. As he spoke, Ace lowered himself to the floor next to one of the beds. From somewhere deep in the ship, Junpei suddenly heard a screeching of metal on metal. It was almost as if the ship were screaming. Would it really hold until the timeline was up? Already, D-Deck was flooded. It was sudden silence, the only sound of the sad metal wailed the ship. Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who spoke first. Well, where are you waiting for? We're wasting time here. Why don't we hurry it up? As if a spell had been broken, the others all began to talk at once. You're right, we should get going. That's all we can do right now. Seven... Seriously. Honestly, I was getting kind of sick of listening to you guys talk. You too, Santa? I... I have to find my brother. Wait. All of you! Let's just calm down and think about this. There has to be some way to get everyone out. There has to be! Right, Jumpy? Say something! Yeah, let's think here. There's gotta be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine! Forget about it! I'll figure it out on my own! She spun around and ran toward Ace. Oh, he looks dejected. He had slumped down next to the bed when June grabbed his arm and pulled. Come on, Ace! Please stand up! 
You can't give up yet. We just have to sit down together to think about this. We'll figure out a way that we can go all get out of here. Then it happened. What happened? I... What does that even mean he fell forward? Is he dead? I'm, you know, I, I'm tempted to continue on right here, but this is going to be like a perfect cliffhanger for both me and you guys. So, um, yeah. What happened to Ace, guys? Where the hell's Snake? What's going on? I guess we'll figure out maybe in the next episode. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play 999. I'll see you guys later.